A goji dog. There we go. Good girl. She's <laughs> she's, she's kind of looking. She, she could care. hear that. She's, like, she, she's like, where the hell is he? Where is he? I'm ready to attack him. I can't wait to lick his balls. Justin says Goji, the same things when he uh, when he sees me as well. Goji, do you miss Uncle Brian? Let's see. Uh, are you a dog? Goji, are you a dog? She says a very dumb one. Yes. <sighs> she is looking. She is looking adorable this morning. She is absolutely looking adorable. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're going to be joined here momentarily by. Well, speak of the devil. There he is knocking on the wall, knocking on the door now. Knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. Hey, 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 It's the end of the live stream for the cure, ladies and gentlemen. We're shutting the stream down. <laughs> listen, uh, I'm sorry this is that you pre coffee. Pre coffee, baby. Hey, listen, I've had to hear your ass sing. Yesterday you were singing. It's true. I heard you singing. So. It's because I'm. It's because I'm good. You, I can't help that. Can't help it. I'm just giving the people what they want. Also, more of the sauce here. Get Goji out of there. Let's get the sauce on there. Look at him. Look at him. But uh, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and pop. Oh, yes. I know I am. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. All right. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are joined now by... Well, let's just say it. Let's just say it. The most beautiful man in podcasting. This side of the Shout sauce. Shout out Copley, apparently. This, wow. Jeez. Welcome, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, to, to Paul from the Countdown. Dan doesn't know what the fuck he's reviews. talking about. Look at this. Look at this beautiful <laughs> bastard. Look at him. Man. How are you, man? Hello, brother? gentlemen. Hello I, there. He's the, word be- he's the word beautiful. And look at the sh- screen we're sharing with. The, the, the svelte Nick. The uh, half Hulk Justin and the <laughs> absolute sexiness that is Brian Loy, which uh, even... first time I think we've shared. Bitches can't uh, get enough videos. of my stuff. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so guys, you flatter get ready, me. Get ready uh, for three hours of this. Uh, I hope you're, <laughs> you're nice and settled in for a, a good, a good long bit of this because Paul's going to be here for us for the next few hours, helping us raise money for cancer research. Uh, we're thrilled that you're here. What do you got? What's that in your hand? I saw something. What is that? Yeah. This is uh, uh, at my time, it's 10 p.m. At your time, it's 10 a.m. This yeah. is a son of a beast 6.5% uh, New England IPA, which Jeez. is uh, brewed just down the road, but is actually really fucking good. There yeah, you go. So, there you go. Now I kind of want to go and uh, now I kind of want to go and, and, and have a beer at 10 New o'clock England in the morning. IPA. Uh, let's see. Oh my, do my eyes really spy a Gidget Von LaRue in the chat? Oh my oh God. My goodness. Hey, everyone, 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 everyone clean it up. Everyone just take, take a quick minute. I'm going to turn off the video. Everybody just <clears throat> take a quick minute. All right. Everybody, everybody <laughs> primp yourselves up. All right. Okay. All right. Now, now we're back. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like Lois Horse's version of primping self. It was rub the chin suggestively. He knows you know, what people want. You know what I did to primp this morning? I rolled out of bed and stumbled over to the desk and turned on my computer, and that's what I did this morning. <laughs> I, are you honestly telling me your hair is like that when you get out of bed? Dear God, I wish I had that problem. Not not always. <laughs> I usually, I've never seen you wake up with messy hair before. I usually toss and turn in my sleep, but I guess uh, I, I passed out last night. I mean, even when I mess it up before we go to bed, I wake up in the morning and it's still perfect. So, yes. What? Bam. All right. So there we go. I had to fix that. There we go. So, can't type in the chat. I can't remember my login to Twitch. Well, that's dumb. Oh my lord. Gidget, we just want to. We just want to. We just. We just want to make sure we're pretty enough. You know, to to entertain you here, we're I mean, we're definitely going to be. You know, it's Paul's here. We can't keep him from being a potty mouth for more than three minutes. You know that. Jeez, and then oh, the yeah. sauce. I'm the problem. Yeah, <laughs> sauce. Woo. That's a lot of cum. See, can't keep the can't keep the filth <laughs> out of his mouth. I'm beginning to regret not bringing all my equipment back to my house so I could reply with the soundboard. Oh man, see. Oh, Ashley. Uh, let's see. Is anybody over else over there? 
Okay, I think I, I think I if I didn't if I didn't catch your name in the chat, uh, welcome. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for being here for day two again of live stream for the cure. Uh, again, ladies and gentlemen, we are fifty one point two seven percent of the way toward our goal for a future immune to cancer. Uh, just Dave absolutely slaying it last night, uh, closing it out with two hours. That was so much fun talking dread, doing the Podlywed game with my Justin, which was a weird fused combination of the sauce and Gerald trying to figure what out was what the school? I think Gerald thinks. <laughs> what was the school? What did you get out of ten? Oh well by for... the way, by the way, Paul, we got like five out of ten. I think oh, it's the same as what Wayne got. Yeah. So uh, Dave told me to rub it in. Told me to rub it in. He said, suck it, Paul. I did maybe throw a lot of shade your <laughs> way during the Paul. segment. <laughs> suck it, Paul. I think uh, suck it, Wayne. Paul was 100% right in what Paul guessed. Man. <laughs> Listen to this, son of a bitch. Uh, I mean, I think we all deserve one of these this morning, right? I sucked a dick last night. There you go. You're welcome. Just, to, just to, Don't worry, Paul. He's still here in spirit. Uh, so yeah, I know we have uh, a, a lot of a lot of different uh, content we're going to throw in here at you guys today. We have uh, Paul's going to do top ten movies of two thousand uh, because Ooh. all those movies, all the movies we're going to list are celebrating twenty years today. And uh, yes, spoiler alert: my battle, my number one is going to be Battlefield Earth. So just, just I'm, I'm, I'm popping the cherry <laughs> early. We're just going to get right in there. Uh, we're going to do another game. We did this. Uh, was it last year or was it two years ago? No, it was two years ago, obviously, because you weren't uh, live on the show last year because you were running a race yep. in Sydney. But uh, I was. You know, um, we're going to do a, a game of Guess Paul's Rating, which is where Paul has sent me a whole bunch of ratings for movies. And it's up to you, the audience, to determine what Paul's rating is. And the high score will win a prize. We're going to give away a prize for that segment. Also, we're going to do our top five favorite music albums of all time. So we've got a lot of fun playing for you guys here. We've got a lot of amazing guests, a lot of amazing podcast partners all coming down the line. So if you're just tuning into the stream for the first time, if you haven't popped by the live stream for The Cure yet, uh, thank you. Just, th just thank you for being here. Thank you for, for being here to help us uh, fight for a future immune to cancer. That's what we're all doing here. And, uh, Paul, thank you very much for setting aside three hours of your evening uh, to, uh, to help us kick off day two of uh of live stream for the cure melissa you know i love you thank you so so much for being here uh it's a pleasure thank you i i'm stoked psyched to be here this is the highlight it's a long weekend here in Australia, in my part of australia uh, except for me of course because i have to work both tomorrow and monday but Ooh. anyway uh this this therefore is by far the highlight of my weekend i am i have four of these really high content beers and alcohol content beers, and I will carry the ship in terms of the beer drinking until it passes midday at least, and you may join me. We've got Dan Brennick, executive producer, Bane himself. Kicking things off with a $10 donation. $10 Ooh. for a future immune to cancer. Thank you. Bane? <laughs> <laughs> the, the fire rises. <laughs> Wait, the goal rises. There we go. Get it right, damn it. Uh, what? What's the, uh, what's the... <laughs> good God in heaven. Uh, so, uh, you know what? I'm going to, I think we'll, we're going to do the top 10 of the 2000 of the year 2000 first. Um, All right. but he, he'll, he'll get mad if I don't let him in here to play. So we're also going to welcome in Gerald God from two peas on a podcast. Woo. He was waiting to, he was just waiting to click that button. As soon as I said that, literally the second I said it, he was immediately just hey. all over this. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. You gotta unmute yourself. Welcome to. No, I got him. I got him covered. I got him covered. He's yeah, he's piped he's in through the board. And uh, I think we even got a Justin Justin wife cameo there a, a minute or two ago. Gerald, speak. Oh. Speak. Hello, Paul. Okay. Yeah. How are we you? Can hear him good. We're good. Hey man, how are you? Good to see you. You too, brother. Okay, so. Uh, we have, uh, we just got another oh, donation in there. $25 donation from Gamecock Mitch. I think it said in honor of that crazy bastard Paul from the countdown. Oh, mm -hmm. thank you, Michelle. Mm -hmm. Lovely of you. Thank you very, very much. And I think, yeah, Gerald knows Michelle as well, right? That's right. One of my patrons. Yeah. There you go. Love her. All right. So, uh, Paul, without further ado, because this is, this is, this is your bag, baby. You know, you know how this stuff runs. Uh, you know, why don't you go ahead and, and get us started on, uh, you know, top 10 movies 
of the. Well, hang on, wait a minute. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me prime you. Let me prime you. I sucked a dick last night. There you go. I figured if you heard Wayne again, maybe it would maybe it would really get you get you ready to go. Mm. What well, made me angry at someone? Uh, are we all doing this, or is it just Gerald, you and me? I, yeah, we'll, we'll, us and I mean, if, they, if they made lists, we can all do it. I don't know what the, I don't know what they did. Okay. Didn't prep for. Oh, I wanted sit there to and, and judge. Harshly. I wanted to, but I'm actually technically. I hope no one's watching. I'm actually working right now, but I jumped on because <laughs> I'm listening to you guys, and I I, I didn't want to miss your first segment on the, you know on on the live stream for the cure. I will be joining you later this weekend specifically, which I am prepared for. Um, but right now I just wanted to come in again. Voice off is harassment. Gerald constantly texting me, telling me I should be on here. Um, and the fact I don't think anyone from work wow. is watching. Uh, but I'll still so be here's, listening. Here's for that. Here's for working double timing. Is this is this the, the year two thousand or the, the year, decade? 2000? The year two thousand. Because okay, all these the movies are celebrating year. twenty years. Gotcha. So you do. It. We'll come to you last then, Louis. Okay. Could, I'll need to hastily right, well, assemble some kind of list. And, and, you and, can and do it. this is with a, a complete and utter fuck you to Nick because geez, you upset me with your recent viewing of this film. Wow. Uh, fuck. You. Number 10, best film of 2000 for me, Pitch Fucking Black. Eat a dick. Wow. I sucked there a go. dick last <laughs> night. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong Pitch Black, you, Paul? <laughs> wow. 20 years ago, was a hell of a time. And I'll tell you why. It's a bit of a story as to why it's my number 10. One, I enjoyed the sort of unpredictable deaths. Yes, the special effects wouldn't hold up today, but 20 years ago, they were absolutely fucking fine. Uh, I think Vin Diesel is actually passable in this movie. I like his arc he goes on where he isn't as big a cunt at the sorry I forgot what show I was on uh, <laughs> asshole <laughs> uh, but at the end of the film he is, he is at the start and I like the way that the supposed good guy becomes the that asshole through the course of the film but we left the cinema that night having seen it and walked out and Wayne's car got broken into and Ooh. they stole everything in his, from his car except his CD collection <laughs> wow <laughs> they left they left that behind. That tells you something. <laughs> it, it does. So it has a special place in my heart, this movie, for that reason, and that reason mainly. Oh, my Lord. Okay, well, from Paul, from Paul over to, we'll go over to Gerald. All right. You mentioned Michelle, Paul, and she actually came up with a top five countdown that's going to be airing next week for me on Sandra Bullock movies. So I'm throwing Ooh. Miss Congeniality Ooh. in there. Sandra yeah. Bullock. Spoiler Ooh. alert for my top five coming up, but I love her and I love <laughs> this movie. America's Sweetheart, Miss Congeniality. It's a little dated in terms of <laughs> PC-ness, but uh, it's a real fun movie. I just watched it again recently, so Miss Congeniality would be my number 10. That's, um, God, I don't even think, I still don't think I've ever seen that movie for whatever reason. Oh, I haven't seen it either. <laughs> Jesus. Nick, I feel guys. like you would love it. Yeah. I probably would, because I, I do love me some Sandy B, so... Sandra um, Bullock and and my cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, heaven! I guess is it my turn? Is it my turn now? Are you ready, Paul? Yours or Gerald's? Are you ready? Oh yeah, yours. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm ready. I, ready. I tried to Off suss this out, and I'm I'm kind of still placing them in order to be 100 percent honest. But I tried to suss this out as like, you know, movies I've revisited from the year 2000 that I remember better are going to go higher on the list. Uh, so the stuff that I remember fondly from at least back when I saw it, I'm going to put down here. So I'm just going to put the number 10 is The Perfect Storm, which oh, yeah. I thought okay. it was enjoyable. Uh, you know, you got some, what does is, what is Wayne call him? Jojo Clue Clue or whatever the fuck he calls him. George, George George Clue Clue. Yeah. There you go. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark Wahlberg, of course, it was based on a true story where, you know, a bunch of fishermen went out to sea and got swallowed up by some uh, some some big water. Big water. Oh. Anybody? Anybody? No? Nobody? I, it was enjoyable enough. Yeah. I, I enjoyed it. I, it I, just, right. I saw it's it right. back in the day, and I know I liked it. So that's why I had stuck it down here at number 10. Any, anybody loving the uh, the perfect storm? Uh, Drew shows some of the scenes from the movie right. in uh, his classroom as uh, examples of man versus nature. There you go. Oh, okay. I think I've actually only watched like five minutes of that when TNT used to show it on Saturday afternoons. Man, the stone's on you. Yeah. Oh, my Lord. So are we over to the sauce now? Oh, fuck off. Oh, okay. Well, in that case. Wow. Maybe not. 
Man. Sorry, no, I was, I'm, I'm trying to log into Twitch and I'm failing dismally. So I, I only signed up yesterday and still, and 24 hours later, can't remember my login. <laughs> boy, boy, fuck you, Paul. <laughs> I want to be able I to see, type in the I, chat. I see Dan in the chat saying, Go, Loisas, go, better be repping the Entei movie. And the Entei movie, I, I, from my memory, is Pokemon the Movie 3, not Pokemon the Movie 2000, which came out in the year 2000. Pokemon the Movie 2000 has Lugia in it, which is my favorite Pokemon, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> anyway. So think, is that your answer? No. I, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going, my number 10 is purely out of spite. Purely out of the fact that it would never, ever end, end up on any top 10 movies of the year 2000 list ever mm. so i'm going with the adventures of rocky and bullwinkle because fuck you i love that movie <laughs> wow <laughs> it is one of the most loving adaptations of a cartoon to live action ever and um it perfectly captures the spirit of the cartoon for whatever reason it has this reputation of being really awful but i watched it as a kid over and over and over again <laughs> I watched it somewhat recently. It still hold, holds up. So fuck you. The Adventures of Rocky and Bowling oh Goals by number God. 10. Gidget von the Roo sums it up perfectly in the chat. What the fuck? <laughs> Again, <laughs> purely up. out of the reason that no one else would put this on a top 10 list. Oh it's on God, mine, God. damn it. And that's oh. what makes you our special god of podcasting, the Loy Sauce himself. <laughs> that's right. My special boy. Oh. Uh, a lot of WTFs in uh, the chat. <laughs> You're not my dad. You know, you know what? Uh, Julio from the Contrarians understands. He says, right there with you. Nice. Man. De Niro's last great performance. People goof on De Niro in that movie. He's just playing the character the way it was portrayed in the cartoon. Okay? People don't understand. Well, uh, Rene Russo was whatever her name was. Natasha That's Fatal. The That's the one. And Jason Alexander and Piper Perabo. Come on, people. Dead silence. I just, I just wanted. To, I was gonna. I was thinking about it, and I was just like, let's just all let it just be extremely silent. Right I mean, now. just think here. Just think. It is in our time, ten twenty three a.m. in the morning. And Nick, I know that you just woke up less than an hour ago. Oh yeah, I know for a fact. So I mean, we're all kind of still. Even still though working I'm through not, that morning voice, baby. Yeah, you got to do it. You got to do it. All right. Well, uh, Polly, I believe that brings us back over to you, my friend. All right, well, maybe something slightly more uh, reasonable as my number nine, at least according to some, is a uh, Tom Hanks film. Strangely enough, having very recently uh, jumped on the Tom Hanks top 10 films, uh, I'm going with Castaway, which Low. is pretty damn good. Flick. Ooh, look out. Very nice. Uh, yeah, there we go. Gerald will talk about it more, but uh, I like this film a lot. I particularly like Tom Hanks' performance, and Wilson is the third best non-human <laughs> sidekick of all time. Spoiler Correct. alert. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, I'm going to rep some horror guys, especially with Justin and Loy here with me. So, Ooh, baby. A couple of them back to back, actually. So, my number nine is my final I destination. The first one. I mean, you, you, just, uh, don't, you just don't count, Paul. <laughs> no. That's low for Gerald, you. Gerald, you leave okay. me out of horror? God damn, man. Yeah. Yeah, what was I've your... sinned my invite. What was your pick? <laughs> I missed it. Final Destination. Yeah, boy. Yeah. A movie that I personally love more than anything. I saw that shit in theaters opening night and recently rewatched it again. And in my opinion, it still holds the fuck up. Love yeah. me some Devin Sawa. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it does hold the fuck up. That whole series holds the fuck up. It's great. It's one that I always go to. It's like, you know, late night comfort flicks. If I want to see people getting maimed, decapitated, blown apart, you know, burned to death in a tanning bed, I know where to go. <laughs> right. That's yeah. my nine. I'm, I'm here. I'm here to do this. I'm, I'm throwing this in here just for Justin's sake. I can't even remember. Like, I know I saw it like at one point, but just for Justin and just because we know we've been talking about so much of it lately on the show, ready to rumble, baby. <laughs> David Arquette, it's a right? Dumb fun wrestling movie. <laughs> Isn't that wasn't that the one that David Arquette? Yeah, yeah. it's David Arquette. Yeah. With oh my god! I, I, like everybody oh, from WCW. Yes. And this happened. This came out right at right after he got the WCW championship, right? It was right around that time, yeah. Yeah. 
I had to put it in here just for Justin's sake, just because it's it's ready to rumble, man. The end. I'm, we're not going to talk anymore, anymore about it. We're going to move on very swiftly I'm, over to I've never even seen it. <laughs> hashtag Nick likes wrestling. It's ba- basically just the pick for the wrestling aspect of it. You know, it's basically just it. Fair enough. Strange, but fair enough. <laughs> uh, let's see. <sighs> Uh, okay, uh, I was just checking over in the chat. Sorry, uh, Loisos, number nine. I'm gonna go with a horror film too. It's Shadow of the Vampire. Uh, ah. This is this is a film that I feel is still undervalued, but it's about the making of the film, the classic silent film Nosferatu. And uh, I can't believe I still haven't seen this movie. Will, yeah. Willem Dafoe plays Max Shrek, who of course plays. Uh, Count Orlock in the original Nosferatu, and uh, it's it, it, there's like this metafiction kind of or this meta narrative running throughout where people on the set actually think that are, or are suspicious that Max Shrek is actually a vampire. Mm-hmm. So uh, it, it it plays with our preconceptions of the story of Nosferatu, and. Uh, kind of plays with that meta aspect, uh, which I think is very creative, very clever. And I feel like it's underrated. Uh, very few people talk about it anymore, but it deserves some love. So it's my I number agree. nine. Nick and I talked about this on our black and white movie episode, and I scolded him then for not having seen it. And that was like two months ago, and he still hasn't seen it. But Willem Dafoe is on another level in this movie. And it's especially if you like Nosferatu, it's just a great kind of behind the scenes view of it. I love this movie. Nope, I haven't seen it still. <laughs> yeah. Nick's got Good Nick's film. had Nick's had stuff to do, <laughs> so I understand. But um, yeah, yeah thank you, Joe, Gerald. for backing me up on that. Uh, uh, it's a good uh, choice. Uh, thank, right. you. We, thank you. Are we back to Paul? We're back to Paul, I believe. We are back to me. All right, my number eight uh, is a film which will be higher on other people's lists. It's just such a downer of a film, and one which, as much as I think it's the only good Aronofsky film, Get the fuck out. It's one I don't enjoy watching oh, I, I think it's a fantastic <laughs> film requiem for a dream so jesus christ fucking low <laughs> so so paul you're going to be picking up the upcoming 4k ultra hd disc i assume then Ooh, well it may, it may be maybe uh there's a bunch of other ones i still to get around to watching yet but uh yeah it's a it's a great film and for all the reasons that have been discussed ad nauseum on all of our podcasts <sighs> Nick's face looks a lot very similar. His outraged and shocked face look exactly the same. There you go. If for those playing along at Hang home. On. I sucked a dick last night. Okay, there we go. Now now all is now all is well with the world again. Actually I have this one on here too. <laughs> I sucked a dick every night. <laughs> <laughs> Let this be a lesson to everyone. When you go on the Epic Film Guys and you are pre recording, everything is fair game. Everything Just ask Justin is fair game. Awesome. Always. Listen, I don't. We don't even try to coax these sound bites out of the sauce. He literally just spills them out of himself. Like I said yesterday, (laughs) dude, the guy spouts off one-liners, brand new ones every single day. Yeah, this uh, this film. uh, So I have a poster of it hanging up in my uh, in my stairwell in the house. Uh, It is an absolute masterpiece, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, This is. It's a hard watch. I definitely believe it's a hard watch. Uh, a lot of people put it on a list of movies they'll never watch again or whatever, uh, which I find the, 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 the yeah. kind of character deconstruction that Aronofsky does in the film absolutely fascinating. So I rewatch it again and again and again. And plus, it just has it has Jennifer Connelly in it, who is oh. infinitely, infinitely rewatchable. Uh, I absolutely Anyone watch the start of Snowpiercer TV show yet? Mm-mm. No. Holy shit, that woman is fine. Yeah, I mean, just put just put it out there. We've been new since Labyrinth. We've known this. Even even I would probably watch that just for her, even though it's Snowpiercer and Snowpiercer fucking sucks, Paul. Oh come on, Nick. No. Let's not do this Wrong. first thing in the morning. <laughs> get, I feel like Gerald is like get he's barely awake because he's up been here. up all night defending oh. defending shit. Uncut oh, gems. Yes, I was all over defense oh, of that last yeah. night. 
Yeah, he, he, <laughs> he tried to hit me with that bullshit nonsense last night. I am so, so, so sorry that I missed that. I If I had known, then I would have fought through whatever I was dealing with to be on. But... Uncut Gems is such a fucking piece of shit, too. Sure it is. The funny yeah, thing yeah. is, though. Imagine no, thinking that. <laughs> yeah, imagine Nick, being the only I, what about person someone in actually... a sea of hundreds of thousands of people that disagree with you. How's it feel? And the funny thing is, is I had someone actually text me at like 1030, someone that you know, that used to work with us, Mr. Matt Parks, randomly out of the blue. Like he rarely ever talks to me. And he's like, just watch Uncut Gems. What a horrible fucking movie. And I was like, That's wow, right. OK. <laughs> That's right, Matt Parks. Speak of the devil. I just That's told him right, he was man. wrong. And he didn't know what he was talking oh, about. man. That's OK. That's right, man. But yeah, <laughs> it's definitely coming up uh, way, 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 way higher on my list. Anybody else got anything to say about it? Uh, the only thing I was going to say is get that poster and put it over the Batman versus Superman over here. I think uh, that's what you no. should do. No. You guys see Bane's head there, kind of right over his right shoulder, too. You, half of Bane's head from that IMAX release me and Justin went to when we saw the whole Nolan trilogy and IMAX at the same time. And man, That, that was, was beautiful. one of the most amazing experiences we ever had together. I didn't. I barely even fucking ate any of that salsa. All right, I'll make sure to leave you. I've barely gotten to eat, like, fucking anything for the last, like, day and a half. <laughs> I'm so fucking hungry. I'm so tired. Oh, God. Hey, guys. I got to jump out real quick. The wife's in a, a work meeting, which means you'll be able to hear her talking in the background. So I'll be in the and chat. Be angry. Fuck. And I'll be jumping back in when appropriate. <laughs> All right. I got another <laughs> horror for you. All right. So it's up to me, right, Paul? I think. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. All, All right. right. Was eight. Yep. All right, so my number eight is in the realm of horror, but it's really a thriller from Robert Zemeckis, What Lies Beneath. Ooh. The reason I Double love Zemeckis. this, if it's not obvious, by the way, spoilers for a 20-year-old movie, Nick, or do you want me to keep it under it's wraps? It's 20 years old. 20 years old. All right, just making sure. What the fuck? <laughs> just making sure. <laughs> uh, but I did like the uh, got, Dan echo there. <laughs> Listen, got, I don't do I don't I don't do this 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 baby this baby toes dip your toes into the water bullshit. Like if it's more more than six months or a year old, like you didn't care enough. Whoa, that's true. And actually, yeah. Julio had a good point in the chat. He said he thinks the spoiler, or I'm sorry, the trailer spoiled it. Spoiled like, it. It's like I twenty so twenty fucking years ago. Like who? If you didn't see it in twenty fucking years, and you and you complain about spoilers, yeah, go fuck yourself. <laughs> What I love about it, you've got Han Solo slash Indiana Jones in a character, Harrison Ford, that we've known traditionally as this hero, and the plot twist is he is the bad guy, and we just never saw that. It was a very rare thing to see that kind of iconic actor in that role, and it was a cool ghost story, had a lot of cool imagery. I love Zemeckis' style of filmmaking, but the turn that Harrison Ford goes through at the end of the movie is really what sold me on this. It's a little long. I feel like they could have shaved about 15 or 20 minutes. But generally speaking, this is a good watch and a good rewatch, in my opinion. I watched it last October. So, um, yeah, What Lies Beneath, that would be my number eight. Nice. So it is also uh, my number eight. Uh, I, I, I did see it. I did see it. So, uh, yeah, uh, good stuff, Drew. Thanks, Under man. the sauce. And I uh, think Gidget Von LaRue there, What Lies Beneath is awesome. A uh, bit of trivia. Robert directed it between Castaway while Tom Hanks changed his body. There you go. Hmm. How cool Thanks, is G. that? Didn't know that. I ain't never seen What Lies Beneath. Oh, man. You'd love it. I'm sure I would. Except I just spoiled it for you. <laughs> Bitches can't get enough of my stuff. That's okay. Um, I wasn't <laughs> listening to you anyway. So. Boom. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I did have to step away for a hot second, so I I missed whatever it was the spoiler was. But good. Um, I'm just kidding, Gerald. I love you. I love you. Ah, uh, let's see. Number eight. Um, this is another like nostalgic pick for me personally. This is not definitive by any means necessary, but um, I'm going with Godzilla 2000 because I grew up as a Godzilla fan my entire life. And so um, I, 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 when the 1998 American Godzilla came out, I still was trying to convince myself that I, I liked the movie, even though it was not Godzilla. It still said Godzilla on the tin, and therefore I felt like I needed to like it out of fan loyalty. But then uh, Godzilla 2000 came along, and that was like the balm of 
on the disappointment of Godzilla 1998. Um, Godzilla fights aliens. That's all you really need to know. And it's 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 goof it's goofy and it's uh and it's fun, damn it. So that's my number eight. I, okay, never seen it. Really, I want to see kid get strangled. <laughs> yeah, I've never, I, I, I never watched it either. I love my Godzilla, and and here comes Shin Godzilla. He's joined the chat. Yeah. Look at those tiny, tiny arms. <laughs> <laughs> this version of Godzilla. Raphael. This version of Godzilla looks like it's in agony every moment it's on screen. Just, just look how much pain this poor lizard is in. Anyway, my God in heaven. So, Polly, you're number seven. Back to me. Back to me. Back to me. My number seven is where I put Final Destination, Gerald. So, okay. two of us. How dare you? Correctly, have it on the list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I've already talked about why I love that one. All right. So, quickly to me, let me pull my list up. Okay. So, in my opinion, probably the last good movie from start to finish that Shyamalan Ding Dong made is Unbreakable. So it's my number seven. That's showing up on my list. From M. Night Shyamalan. Um, oh, good for you! <laughs> and how was it? Oh, I hope it was fucking good because it's fucking useless now, isn't it? <laughs> oh my God, heaven. Sorry to interrupt. Please, Gerald. No, continue. no, I mean, it's... That's mostly what I want to say about it is, you know, he's coming off the success of The Sixth Sense. Obviously, you got Bruce Willis back. He still cared back then, especially when he worked with M. Night. Uh, did a really good job in this movie. And there's a lot of plot twists in this movie, too, and a lot of callbacks to, like, the comic book genre, which I really liked. Um, you know, I know Dan and Nick were huge fans of Brightburn, but typically speaking, you don't get a comic <laughs> book kind of it, mix Excuse with- you. Uh, Excuse you. <laughs> mixing with different genres like this, suspense thrillers and whatnot. But yeah, I'm a big fan of it. Uh, I love Unbreakable. I'm assuming it's on someone else's list on the panel, but it's one of my faves. We need to have a yeah, no, Unbreakable holds I up. Put it on the list. Was was that Dan disparaging your choice? He was disparaging my love. Well, love's not a the right word. My like for Brightburn. I enjoyed Look, Brightburn last Split year. Also I'm, I'm there with you, Justin. Brightburn is fine. Yeah, it's good. I quite enjoyed it. Yeah. Brightburn was such a piece Fuck of you, shit. Fuck you, Dan. The only good thing about Brightburn <laughs> was the gore. It was the only good I, thing about Brightburn. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But it's just such an... Well, we don't have to get off on Brightburn, but I liked it. Yeah. We've only got, we've got 22 minutes to get through six choices each, so we've probably better motor. We don't have to get off on Brightburn. No one got off on that. <laughs> G- Gerald, Gerald, <laughs> Gerald said it all perfectly. Um, Bruce Willis still giving an actual performance, and um, it's it's like it, it's emotional. It's like it, it's this um, minimalist deconstruction of the superhero genre, and I just find that so fascinating. Especially, it came out during a time where superheroes, superhero movies, didn't come out every single week. So, yeah, no, I, I think that's a great choice. I put it on my list as well. Thanks, man. Tell my and and Shyamalan's, Shyamalan's made nothing but shit since, except Split. I like Split. You Fuck know, Split. I don't like Split, but McAvoy. Wow, like it you wouldn't like be Split? a. I mean, it's okay. A good performance does not a good movie make. Yeah, McAvoy's and great it's... in it, but that rest of that movie is a bag of fucking dicks. I don't hate it. Like, well, that's kind of my that's... argument about there will be blood. But anyway, mm. Bazinga, hot take. Wait, hey, Paul, wait, Paul with the hot takes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got to move on. Paul's correct. We got to move on swiftly. So uh, my number six, seven, seven. 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 Oh yeah, seven. Dude, I can't even count now. Uh, my number seven is, uh, and other people might have it higher on their lists, but there's just so many better films that came out that year. Uh, it's still a good movie in my opinion, though. It's uh, Brian Singer's X Men. Okay. Kicked off the yeah. Fox X Men franchise. It's. A, I, I still think it's a good movie. Um, but it even is, yeah. in the even in the pantheon of superhero movies, I don't think it's great. Like great compared to a lot of other movies that came along, or like it's not even a patch on its sequel. You know, X two. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Number seven, saucy. All right. Well, let's just say Unbreakable is my number seven. They <laughs> lie. Damn it. <laughs> All right. Uh, I guess that's me then. Number yeah, six. Baby. I'm going with uh, a Mel Gibson joint. I'm going with The Patriot. 
Yeah, that's right. Hello. I said it. Oh, oh. I, thought I, I thought I'd be on this hill by myself. But yeah. I uh, love this good, fucking movie. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it is about the Patriot other than it's got some killer battle scenes, uh, an actual antagonist who you love to hate, and um, a, a surprising moment or two in the film. Let's put it that way. Deliciously evil performance by Jason Isaac who I fucking adore. He is so amazing. He's great in it. Uh, Gibson, I think, is great in it. Heath Ledger gives a great performance in it. Uh, I absolutely love him in it as well. Uh, Yeah, it's... I mean, Roland Emmerich has not made many great uh, films in his career, except for... Certainly not. There's another one he made. I I forget what it is. I can't remember the name of it. (laughs) Hang on, maybe Dan will remember. I don't know. I I did that just to get the look I'm getting right now, ladies and gentlemen. Um, But yeah, no, that's uh, coming up later on my list. All right. It's no X Men Apocalypse, says Brad. <laughs> That's referring to it. Back to X Men. The fuck, Brad? Uh, God damn it! I think he. I think he. Had Brattlefield Earth poisoned his brain, guys. Gerald, uh, am I yeah. up? Yeah, you're. No, I think Paul's up. Yeah, number. I did. I went. Yeah, uh, Patriot. Yep, number six. Oh, you were gushing about it. I thought it was your pick. This yeah. guy. Yeah, because we're not. We, this ain't two piece, Gerald. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God it's five for that. Piece. You have viewers. Damn. All right. So by six is the first comedy that I think's really been mentioned. The Fairly Brothers, a dark comedy with Mr. Jim Carrey just doing his thing. Me, myself, and Irene. So, mm. you know, he's the the poster for this when it came out. It said from gentle to mental. Um, you know, this is just a balls to the wall dark comedy, and this is literally Jim Carrey doing his best like physical comedy, but also kind of dramatic. I mean, it's it's kind of a serious, it's got a serious message in it, and a serious subject matter. But he's just so fun to watch, and he is just hamming it up in this movie. This was that late '90s, early 2000s <laughs> Jim Carrey who was just amazing. So, me, myself, G- and Irene, Gidget in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm with I'm with Gidget. Not one of my faves, okay. Farrelly Brothers. I'm a bit dark on them for what I had to watch this week. So I'm just yeah. a huge Jim Carrey fan. Any year where there was a Jim Carrey movie, it'll probably be on my list. Love him. Oh, my Lord. Uh, my my number six, which is an excellent, excellent Keanu Reeves movie, The Replacements, baby. I fucking love The Replacements so excellent. much. Oh, the, uh, football one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 football. I I just you know it it just it's such a fun entertaining movie. Uh, like I said, Keanu Reeves is great in it. Isn't that Hackman? Yeah, Hackman's in it. I think. Yeah. Uh, it's a mm-hmm. great movie. Uh, and that's my number six. So on to the sauce. I'm gonna go with Best in Show. Good one. Christopher Guest is mm. unmatched when it comes to uh, when it comes to that mockumentary style of comedy, and. Rest in peace to Fred Willard, who recently passed, who plays the commentator, uh, one of the commentators. He is so, so, so funny. Um, brilliant cast, and it kind of takes a look at the the wacky participants of dog shows, and I don't know, it's just, it, I crack up every time I watch it, and uh, I love Christopher Guest anyway, Waiting, Waiting for Guffman, and Spinal Tap, and all of that, so. Best in show. Very nice. Very nice. All right. Polly! Top halves. Uh, we talked a bit about the TV show remake of this a week or two ago. High Fidelity. The Nick Hornby novel. Uh, John Cusack. Jack Black. Also, funny film. Five. Hey, nice. Great movie. Sim- yeah, it is. Patico. Yeah. Obviously, we'll talk more about this, but I'm, I'm, I don't know. We have to finish Dead on 11 or if we can roll into the next segment and we don't care. What's the go here? No, we're kicking your ass out of oh, here. Then we're going to bring you back in. No, Paul. Just, oh, okay. <laughs> just fucking better. <laughs> it's just good because be I'm out of here. I need my beer. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, nothing more to say about that. It is legitimately funny and it you know has this ridiculous conceit where the main character talks to camera and counts down things from five to one. Dumb. Who would do that? Bunch of bullshit. <laughs> Oh man, yeah. Also, my number five. Uh, I just, I, just what a what a cool movie. Cool. I love it. Well, my five. It, I can't believe it hasn't been mentioned yet, but maybe it's coming up. Is American Psycho, Christian Bale, doing his thing. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, a little bit of horror, a little bit of comedy, nineteen eighties, which I love. 
didn't come out in the 80s, but obviously set in the 80s. And um, I love this movie, man. This might be this might be my favorite Bale performance of his whole career. Just going to throw that out there. Yeah, certainly. Absolutely excellent movie. Coming up on my list in in uh, in in a very short order. It's uh, I just got a chance to talk about it again and revisit it with Sam from Movie Reviews and Twenty Qs and the Queen of the Universe Emily from the Tasteless Podcast. So uh, it's <laughs> it's amazing. It, it, it's such a great movie. Such a great performance from Bale. Uh, I absolutely absolutely love it so yeah it's coming up very shortly on my list as well but uh my number well yeah i did my number five with uh high fidelity so yeah over the sauce sorry <laughs> uh i'm gonna have to go with <laughs> i'm just trying to get There's nothing get, like a well curated list get together my list and um, this is nothing like a well curated list um <laughs> I'm going to go with Almost Famous. Mm, good one. I think Cameron Crowe has made two good movies in his entire career, and that's Say Anything and Almost Smart. Famous. Yeah. Right. And um, it's just so well Aloha. written. Aloha. Mm. I got to disagree <laughs> with you there, Paul. Sorry. Oh, it's awful. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> oh, my Lord. But anyway, I, 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 I don't have much to say about it that hasn't already been said. It's it's funny. It's touching. It's everything you would you would want in a movie. So almost famous. That's Very right. Nice. That's Very right, nice. Julio. I don't I don't like Jerry Maguire. Sorry. Wow. <laughs> Shy towards Jerry Maguire. You had me at hello, Louis Sauce. Uh, Man. Uh, yeah, no. It's quotable. Uh, Louis, so almost famous. I've, I've never seen it. It's quotable. It doesn't mean it's good. <laughs> oh my lord, uh, Paul. I believe that's back to you for four. Uh, okay, so give me a bit of crime, give me a bit of Cockney accents, give me a little bit of Guy Ritchie in his prime, give me Snatch at number four. I'm fucking sure. kicking him out of the call. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> <laughs> fucking God, do I hate what? Snatch. Really? You hate Snatch it's as well? A, oh, it God sucks. damn. You, you, oh, hate, Guy Ritchie, you hate fun. Guy Ritchie's movies are fucking terrible. I like Dags. I like Dags. <laughs> Dan, do you like Dags? <laughs> Paul, Paul heard that, Danny. He was responding to you. <laughs> I like oh Dex. my god! I just Good. oh no 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 no! I I just oh god no no no! Uh, I'm just gonna turn my microphone down. And go away. Mm. <laughs> I can't I can't uh, hide okay, it. Okay, and I think it's a good pick, Polly. Thank you, thank you, Gerald. Usually when Dan or when uh, uh, Nick hates it, you made a good pick. God damn it. I thought your mic was turned down. <laughs> yeah. You, you two are right, like, so, uh, are they polar opposites? So, Christopher Nolan, guys, uh, in 2000, did Memento. He likes to fuck with time and narrative structures. And this is kind of where that all started. That's my number four. Look at this guy. I knew you would say that. That's why I'm here. Uh, to say that Caleb fucking hates this movie. Caleb that, hates that, Memento? That is, my, that is my contribution to this segment. Me picking Memento, Dan just gave me COVID. Cool. <laughs> Bro, you have NC COVID like I, I know. COVID. We have the same COVID. Oh my lord. Okay. Um so what that it's was great Gerald's pick, great number Gerald. four? That was my four. Yeah. Okay. Uh my number four uh, already been mentioned was uh, American Psycho, so on to the sauce. Memento. Nice. Twins. Yeah. So top threes, boys, top threes. Uh, okay, my number three is my sort of left field choice, which not that many people have seen. It's a Japanese film from 2000. It's Battle Royale. Uh, the film okay. which Stephanie Meyer, not Stephanie Meyer, who's the person that wrote uh, The Hunger Games, had Suzanne never Collins. ever not... Thank you, Suzanne Collins, had Suzanne never read Collins. in her entire life, had no idea about it, and you know she just came up with this idea completely on her own. It's uh, possible. The story of a... Stranger not, things have happened. Stone, no, they haven't. That was a TV show. <laughs> uh, no, Battle 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 Royale is uh, an incredible film and shits all over the Hunger Games in every way, shape, and form. What and a story, if you Mark! Seen it, you should seek it out. <laughs> That's my three. Well, oh my three my has already been mentioned. It was Castaway. Love this movie. Uh, next to Ooh, Philadelphia, probably Tom Hanks's best performance. Philadelphia is his best, in my opinion. But I'm a huge Tom Hanks fan, as you know, Paul, and this would be my three from 2000. 
So uh, the, number three is where I correctly, Paul, placed the Patriot <laughs> in its rightful place in the top three of the year because it's so fucking good. <laughs> uh, it is yeah. so fucking good. Saucy. Gladiator. Low. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Low. 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 Slightly. So fucking low. A little bit. Look. <laughs> no. Listen means, here. Like, there are two great good. movies coming up on my list. So, um... If you want to hear what I have to say about Gladiator, we just did a whole retrospective mm-hmm. 20th anniversary episode on it. It was so amazing. Check it out. It was absolutely amazing. <laughs> uh, Brad, 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 Brad. You don't know what you are wishing for there. <laughs> <laughs> well done. I was, uh, it, like It's like Brad said during our Battlefield Earth retrospective. He's like, he's like, we need to see Reap because there's no goddamn way that it's worse than Battlefield Earth. We've already oh, seen the no. worst movie ever. Nope. Nope. I don't know. I'm, 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 <laughs> Just I'm guaranteeing it to anybody. Anybody. Let's get some hashtag <laughs> hashtag release the Prezula cut over in the chat. <laughs> maybe maybe next year for like live stream for a cure five, we can set like twenty thousand. If we hit that, we release it to everyone who who donates. Man. Wow. Okay. Man, you guys heard that, yeah. right? You guys we got him on the we got him on the we got him on the line for that now. <laughs> Secret sequel. Ah, uh, shit. Is it back to me? It's mm. back to you for number dos. Uh, Gladiator. Yeah, that's also okay. my two. For all the reasons that you all talked about in your recent, ex- your wonderful retrospective of it. Yeah, that's also my number two. I mean, come on. Especially if you listen to epic film guys, you heard all the great reasons why, but just an epic, epic film. Just an epic cinematic experience. Ridley Scott is awesome. It's my number yeah. two. So my number is Dan two. Dan also agree. Or is... Dan was just get, we were just he was we were exchanging looks, and then you know he rightly said that we should kill Gerald, you know, which what? I mean will event, eventually end up happening. <laughs> <I laughs> but mean, uh, my number two is three minutes uh, where two I lead. correctly Paul placed Requiem for a Dream, which again is oh. a goddamn masterpiece. I just I absolutely love it. I love how frenetically paced it is. I love, like, Ellen Burstyn was so criminally robbed of Best Actress for this performance by Julia Roberts, who I cannot fucking stand. So that was just even insult to injury that not only did Julia, not only did Ellen Burstyn not win, but she lost it to Julia Roberts of all fucking people. Uh, so, yeah, just what a goddamn film this is. My, that was That's my number two. I love it. I absolutely love it. So I think Very saucy. Nice. Very nice. Numero dos. Ooh. Requiem for a dream. That's right, mm. baby. One of the most emotionally devastating movies I've ever seen. Um, the first time I watched it, I had to just like sit there and do nothing and just kind of reflect. So, so it was like pre-COVID practice. Sure. Sure. <laughs> it was. Um, it was definitely one of those movies that that had a like a physical impact on me so or that i had a physical response to rather so yeah and uh aronofsky is a great filmmaker and i've enjoyed almost every one of his films dr paul (laughs) noah i love noah i will go to the mic for noah in fact (laughs) i could write a dissertation a a whole uh, a whole novel about why Noah's masterpiece and it's misunderstood would, by the public. I wouldn't read it, but please <laughs> write that novel. <laughs> I'm, I'll be happy to. Oh, I'll be happy God. to. Imagine being the screenwriter and sitting down to write a Noah's Ark movie. You could not do it better. Because the, the, the text in the from Bible the is arc, like a, par- a paragraph long. Everything and, from and, the Ark, uh, on the Ark, everything from that point forward is great. And I love Crow in it, but everything before that is Jesus, trippy, fuck balls, like, holy... That's what, why it's amazing. <laughs> giant rock monster fucking things, shambling sh- sh- about. Yes, shlambling. they're fucking angels, and then they, they help build the Ark, and they get redeemed by the eyes of the God, and they get ascended to heaven. Like... No. Yes, they're giant rock monsters. I love the part on more. the boat. The part on the Ark itself is great. Absolutely great, great stuff. 
but and also everything that comes before him. God damn it, that's another so podcast so. episode. I I will be happy to defend Noah until my dying breath. Okay? Oh my lord in heaven! Uh, I think we're back around to Paulie. I think it's finally uh, money shot time, Paul. Uh, ten through one. Money shot time. All right, hip, uh, all right. We're giving going back. Uh, number ten, pitch black. Eat a dick, Nick. Uh, wow. Number nine, Castaway. Eight, Requiem for a Dream. I like it, but not as much as all of you. Seven, Final Destination. Six, Patriot. Five, Possibility. Four, Snatch. Three, Battle Royale. Two, Gladiator. My number one, with a special fuck off, Caleb, is Memento. Nice. One of the greatest <laughs> mindfuck movies ever made. Yep. <laughs> Oh, my Lord. Thank you very much, Brianna Petty, checking in with a $25 donation. Thank you so much, Brianna. Thank you, Brianna. Interestingly, it was just announced seconds ago that Arrow Video is putting out a 4K Ultra HD for Pitch Black. (laughs) They heard this. Yeah. Uh, No, Brad, it's not a nice pick. Do not give him kudos for picking. I was very excited. Yes. (laughs) Oh, that's a Oh, my Lord in heaven. So, uh, Dan, Gerald, uh, Dan should read you 10 through 10 one, I guess. All right. So, to wrap mine up, 10 was Miss Congeniality. Nine was Final Destination. Eight was What Lies Beneath. Seven, Unbreakable. Six, Me, Myself, and Irene. Five, American Psycho. Four, Memento. Three, Castaway. Two, Gladiator. And my number one was mentioned by Mr. Loy Sauce, the god of podcasting, but it's almost famous. Cameron Crowe's masterpiece, in my Ooh. opinion. It's a personal project for him. It was literally based on his life, his teenage years. And you can tell he put all the passion into this film. The music is amazing. Uh, I could go on and on and on. I actually just did a feature on this for my patrons. I love Almost Famous, one of my favorites of all time. One of these days I'll see it, Gerald, I promise. (laughs) (laughs) You've not seen it? Okay. No, I've I've never seen it, unfortunately. My number one is uh, rightfully placed fucking Gladiator, which is easily one of my favorite films, literally of all time. And thank you very much. Uh, Julio has just donated ten dollars to the Prisula Cup Prisula. Fund. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Julio. But uh, yeah, oh, I forgot to uh. I forgot to rip list my list off. So, The Perfect Storm, number ten, uh, Ready to Rumble, number nine, just for you, Justin. Uh, number eight, What Lies Beneath. Number seven, X Men. Number six, The Replacements. Number five, High Fidelity. Number four, American Psycho. Number three, The Patriot. Uh, number two, Requiem for a Dream. And number one, yes, Gladiator. Where where it goddamn belongs. <laughs> Brad, so close. Brad, you so you close. calm yourself down. <laughs> Excellent choice, isn't it? <laughs> uh, so over to the uh, over to Hair Sauce. Uh, number 10, The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle. Yes, really. Number 9, Shadow of the Vampire. Number 8, Godzilla 2000. Number 7, Unbreakable. Number 6, Bre- Breast and Show. Best and Show. Excuse me. Breast and Show <laughs> is a completely different movie. Also a classic, though. Yes. There's um, There has to be. Uh, number 5, Almost Famous. Number 4, Memento. Number 3, Gladiator. Number 2, Requiem for a Dream. And number 1, American Psycho. Uh, if there was ever Ooh. a film that fit my uh, comedic sensibilities, uh, my psychological thriller uh, sensibilities, then this would be it. I think it's Bale's best performance, and um, it's it's compulsively rewatchable. Uh, Requiem for a Dream, and um, <laughs> the not quite as rewatchable. I think I've only watched that twice. But American wrong. Psycho, I can watch that any day. my any Trump day. sound drop wrong? <laughs> I can watch that any day of the week. Just because Requiem for a Dream wears me out as much as I love it. And as as it was my number two, I love it. But number one for me, yeah. American Psycho, because I can watch that any old day of the week. Here, this is going to have to do. I don't, I don't have Trump saying wrong on here, so this will have to do. Build that wall. Build that wall. Build that wall. Build that wall. Um. Yeah, can we not? <laughs> I don't know if anyone uh, if anyone has kept up with the news, but Trump is literally calling for people to be shot in the streets right now. Mm-hmm. Oh, so God. It, it's not a good situation in the U- United States of America. It's not a party in the USA at this point. Hey, hey I hey, saw. Hey. Not to get too far off off brief here, but I saw a tweet from some uh, right wing TV show host. Can't remember her, her name, and it was like a poll on Twitter. If there was a coronavirus vaccine, would you get it? 61% of people said no. Our country's fucked. It's always been fucked. 
and um, it's seriously ser there's there's always been a, a crack in the system, a flaw in the plan, and um, we're 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 just now seeing the results of that come to fruition. It's terrifying. It's a terrifying time to be an American, and I have no. Um, yep. I, I, at this point, there's no uh, understanding. Trying to understand the other side of the aisle, like if you support this monster, then. I don't want to I, politely. I don't want to have anything to do with you, Paul. Can we all come live with you? Seriously. Yeah. Yep. Cool. I've got I've got one spare room with lots of girl little girls toys in it, but I'm sure I can fit you all in. Well, Gerald will bring his little girls toys. It'll be fine. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. I don't have a fucking blue waffle. There we go. Uh, okay, so uh, yeah, just a random Caleb, random Caleb goodness for for everybody. We just got to throw it in there every once in a while. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, we are uh, wrapping up on the first part of Paul, but then, ladies and gentlemen, we can't get rid of him. We're stuck with him still for another two goddamn or hours. You, can you send me the link? To or the you can, because I'm going to get another beer. So, you got rid of me. Are you doing hey. a form for Paul to get Paul's rating? It's not a form. It's just a, it's just a document. Okay. Yeah, it's just, a, it's just a document that he sent me. Okay. For, uh, like no, no. There's just, a, there's just a form that he sent me. So, we're going to play a game of guess Paul's rating. When, where'd Paul go? <laughs> guess where Paul went. <laughs> okay, so guys, instead of guess Paul's rating, it's guess where Paul is. <laughs> guess I will where have Paul to, went. I will have to step away to do some loy sauce morning things, mm -hmm. but uh, I will be I will be lurking can, in the chat. You can say masturbate loy sauce. It's okay. <laughs> I have uh, I have stores. I have meds to take, things to do. So, That's uh, a lot gentlemen. Of cum. Uh, you're you're correct. Um, love you all. <laughs> love you, Loisos. Thank See you, Loisos. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you, Paul. Stay safe. You too. Uh, let's see. Oh, he's Australian. He needs alcohol. That's what Gidget said. Okay. Yeah, I was I was we're talking to Dan, and then I, I looked up, and then Paul was gone. I was like, "Where'd Paul go?" <laughs> <laughs> so we were going to play a game well, of, of guess where Paul is. My cats. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, Brad. Brad was Brad's correct. He said he's getting a copy of Reap for us. That's what it is. Thirty. Those suck. Just don't know what you wish for. No. Listen, we all sometimes, know exactly what we wish for. Sometimes the fantasy is better than the reality, right? We're all aware of this fact. We all know exactly what we're wishing for, Paul. We and we and we <laughs> achingly scream and beg for it. We want to hear a young Wayne with hair shout, "Who the fuck are you?" <laughs> That that I can guarantee happens many times in the film. See, with it's some wonderful dialogue already, written by yours truly. Already, so much better than Battlefield Earth. It hurts. There's a steady cam shot. There's a crane shot. Two of them from memory See, in the film. See, we built a crane, guys. Like all you're doing in the chat, like the chat is literally just going to start going. They're salivating over there. It's all that. It's all they want. Ooh. It's all they need. <laughs> Except uh, we knew the the room was terrible, uh, Brad. So something no, the other way around. We knew Reap was terrible, but we just had a lot of fun with it. So, see, that's all we and care played about it completely Paul. straight, like the room. That's all we care about. <laughs>